Welcome, and thank you for joining us for Delray Beach Public Library's Technology Training and Innovation Lab webinar series. Before we begin, take a moment to mute your microphones and familiarize yourself with the chat window. Please type any questions you have during the presentation into the chat. We will try to answer as many as possible, either during or immediately following the presentation. Our presenter today is Ben Kahn, Instruction and Innovation Librarian here at the library. Ben has a master's degree in library and information science, a bachelor's degree in music and mathematics, as well as a graduate certificate in geospatial analysis. He is a certified Adobe education trainer, a former trombonist and musical director for Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, and has a growing body of artistic projects, including musical composition, logo design, podcast editing work, and video production. Here at the library, he has played a key role in the development of the training, technology training and innovation lab, as well as our DIY recording studio, partnering with local community organizations such as Bound for College, the KOP Mentoring Network, and the Malago Teen Center. Today, we'll be looking at how to use Adobe Photoshop to create composite images by manipulating and combining other images. I'll now hand the presentation over to Ben to let him explain the agenda. Hi, guys. Can everybody hear me? All right, just to make sure. Um, so as Allison mentioned, uh, today's webinar is gonna be all about Photoshop uh, and creating composite images. So a composite image is basically a combination of multiple images, whether it's two or more. Um, just, um, just to give me an idea who, who we're talking with and who my audience is, uh, if you could all go ahead and give me on a scale of one to five, what your familiarity so far with Photoshop is. Uh, if you've never heard of it, uh, you can put in a zero or a one if you like. Um, if you use it every day for a job, that would be the five. And then in between is you've either heard of it or used it occasionally or maybe recreationally. Okay, so yeah, it sounds like we've got some people with experience, a couple people who are, are new to Photoshop, but um, I'm going to try to gear it toward, and toward everyone now that you know, I'll cover some of the basics. Uh, you know, this is, you know, this is a class to get you comfortable with, you know, combining images, working with selections in Photoshop, uh, understanding what layers are and how they work, uh, and finding creative ways to combine images together. Uh, Go over a little bit what I'm planning to cover today. Uh, we'll take a look at the Photoshop user interface. I'll give you a kind of a tour and show you how to set up the different panels that are in Photoshop. Uh, we will work with selection tools for a little while. Um, I'll talk about working with layers and how to do that. Uh, we'll make adjustments to photo and photographic elements and show you the difference between a non-destructive editing techni technique versus a destructive edit or destructive ad adjustment. Uh, I'll talk briefly about using masks um, and define what those are as well. And then we'll look at some of the other Photoshop tools available for getting creative with Photoshop. Uh, there's, there's basically two, two projects that I'm going to take you through today. One's sort of an easier one to get us a feel for creating a composite image. Um, and the second one has a few more elements to it. And I'm going to show you how you can do those extra manipulations and things. I do have a set of notes that I'm going to upload for everybody. Should record. Let's see. The, re the recording will be posted on our website when everything's finished. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I'll send everybody a link to the recording once once the webinar is finished, so you'll be able to access the recording afterward. All right, I'm going to upload a file. And this is my notes for today, if you all want to follow along. Uh, I'm also going to upload two image files. This is what I'll be using for this first project. Again, if you've got Photoshop with you and would like to try to follow along with this, that, that's fine. You know, I encourage that. Otherwise, if you want to access these files later and <clears throat> do it yourself, that, that works too. Uh, all of the photos that I'm using today are um, free use images, so Creative Commons Zero images uh, I got off of pixabay.com. Uh, if you've not used Pixabay, I, I highly recommend it if you're just looking for free stock images to use. Uh, let me go ahead and upload those as well. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that you, you all can see the demonstration. Uh, just to give you an idea again of what you know photo compositing looks like, I'll, I'll show you some of the projects that I've worked on here. Uh, most of these have been for marketing materials for the library. Um, this is the first example here. So this one, you know, I took a picture of a, you know, snow covered path and another picture of a book from the library. Uh, it's actually the magic mountain with a, de a description of a snow scene. Uh, so I kind of, you know, put these two together and, you know, made it look like the book was part of the path or like a mirage coming out of the path. Uh, and, and again, this was just for an advertising flyer that we did for our winter programs. Um, another one uh, for Valentine's Day this year, I uh, put together this one using our library mascot. This is Magnolia the giraffe. And so we took a picture of her on our green screen here at the library and then edited out the green. That's, you know, that's one of the ways that you can get sort of an isolated image like that that can be used as a layer in Photoshop um, using selection tools and other tools to get rid of the green. Uh, and then this last one you may have seen on our advertisements for this class. Uh, these were two photos that I took, one of the library from the back of the library, and the other one, a picture of Wulingyan National Park in China, uh, otherwise known as the Avatar Mountains. And I just sort of put those together as if the mountains are rising out of the library. But anyway, again, those are just examples to show you what the kind of things that can be done with a Photoshop composite. Um, now, getting into creating our own composite today, uh, if you've downloaded those two images entitled Cook and Food, uh, that's what I'm gonna open up right now. Uh, okay. Where, where are they? I'm sorry. It should be shared with you in the chat window. Are they not showing? It's just me, so I'm just sending it to everybody now. Okay, thanks, Allison. Yep, no problem. Okay. All right, while, while we're working on that, I'll talk a little bit about the, the Photoshop workspace. Um, Photoshop is organized into what are called panels. Uh, panels, basically, yeah, it's the same concept as the window, kind of, uh, except panels can be docked in place. Um, and... Basically, there are so many tools in Photoshop to, to display them all at once would be very difficult on really any size screen. Um, so you have these different panels that you can add and remove from your workspace. Right now, I'm set up with the Essentials workspace, which is the default workspace. So this is going to have your Tools panel over on the left. That's all of the tools you work with in Photoshop. Uh, it's got a history panel to show all the changes you've made to your project. Uh, colors panel to work with colors. Uh, layers panel is very important. We'll talk about that layer because that helps organize your project into layers, which I'll define in a moment. Um, the learn panel uh, is a great place to start if you've never used Photoshop. They have several tutorials. Uh, I particularly like this one, fundamental skills for gaining a feel for working with layers and understanding what they do. Uh, I'll go into some things today that'll show that as well. All right, so that is again the essentials panel in Photoshop. If I wanted to remove any of those, I just go down to the one that I don't need. I'll turn the color panel off for now, click that, and my color panel disappears. If I find another one that I wanna add in there, maybe the brushes panel, then I click that and it adds in the brushes panel down here. Now, to open up a project in Photoshop, you can simply go to file and open if you have an image already to work with. Let's see, and I'm going to find desktop. And I'm going to open up this cook.jpg. That's what that one looks like. And then I'm also going to open up the second one, which was food.jpg. 
Okay, so you'll notice I have two tabs here, one for each file that I've opened. There's cook and there's food. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this window so we can see a little better. All right. And, you know, a basic technique for, you know, combining images is just to select the images from, or the part of an image in one photo and paste them in another. So to do that, you've got to learn a little bit about working with Photoshop selection tools. Uh, Photoshop has quite a few of those. Um, some of the more basic ones are the rectangular marquee tool. So that's if you want to make a rectangular selection. The elliptical marquee tool will make oval or circular selections. Uh, single row marquee tools and single column marquee tools are very uncommon that you know selects a single row of pixels or column of pixels. Um, that's usually more for more complex image processing where there's something that got out of alignment. But uh, so more importantly, the rectangular marquee tool, as I said, will let you select a rectangle within within an image. Uh, once you make a selection, you'll see these little dotted lines that go around your selection. Um, with the rectangular marquee tool in particular, if, if I start making a selection and hold down the shift key, it will ensure that my selection is a perfect square. Um, very similar with the elliptical marquee tool. It'll start out as an oval. If I want to make sure that it's a perfect circle, I hold down shift while I'm dragging, and that ensures it's a perfect circle. So that's, you know, the elliptical marquee tool is gonna to be a great one for selecting these dishes here, which is what I want to do. I'm going to select the dishes in this picture here, and then move it onto the table in this picture here. Um, for each of the selection tools, they all have a couple of different modes here for when you're selecting. Uh, this first one says that each new click and drag that you do is going to create a new selection and delete the old one. Uh, the second one is if I want to add to a selection that I've already made. So you can see I've got that part selected and this part over here. If I want to remove part of a selection, that's this third button here. So that removes that part. And this is an intersection. So that's going to get only the parts where the two intersect. Okay. So I am most commonly, you'll use either this first one to create a new selection, or you might use the additive or subtractive ones. Not too often do I use the intersection one, but I just wanted to show you that that's there too. All right, so making a selection using the elliptical marquee tool. Uh, if you need to clear a selection, command or control if you're using a PC, control D will clear that selection. I'm gonna create a new selection here. And I'll start sort of at the top left there. I'm gonna hold down shift. I want this to be a perfect circle. And I also, I didn't quite get, get it lined up correctly there. So what I can do is hold down spacebar as well. And that allows me to move my selection so that I can realign it. I'll let go of spacebar, make it a little longer and then remove my hand from the mouse. And there I have a more or less perf perfect circular selection. Um, to copy that selection, I can either go to edit and click copy or use command C, control C if you're using a PC. Click copy. And then I can go into my other image. And here I'm gonna go back up and click paste and that will paste that in as a new layer in this project. Uh, now, getting to a definition of layers. Uh, layers are a way to organize photographic elements back to front on top of one another. Uh, you can see all of the elements in a, photo, a Photoshop document in your layers panel. Uh, that can also be used to control how they're organized. Uh, so the topmost layers are the ones that are going to show up on top in your image. If I move 
this layer that I pasted in there down to the bottom. I actually can't do that behind my background, but if I click this unlock key here, that's gonna turn my background into just a regular layer so I can show you what I'm talking about. So if I move that plate below the table layer, you notice I can't see it anymore. Um, the other neat thing about layers is you can turn them on and off. Uh, this little eyeball icon next to each layer is how you turn layers on and off. So I'm gonna turn the table layer off and there's my pasted layer underneath. So I'm gonna turn that back on, put that back up there, and I'm gonna get a couple more dishes that we can use on this table. So again, using my elliptical marquee tool. Let's see, I'm gonna get the soup over here. This time I'll just do a Command C to copy and Command V to paste. Uh, there always seems to be more than one way of doing things in Photoshop. Uh, the neat thing about the layers too is once I've made these new layers, <clears throat> you know, from my selections in the other document, they're very easy to move around. So I can go ahead and set the table, you know, and decide where I want these plates to go. Let's see. I'll do one more. Let's do the eggs. And again, Command C, Command V. Uh, as I mentioned, there's other selection tools you can use too. Uh, if uh, the, the elliptical marquee tool with the sort of juggling of the shift key and the spacebar does, does kind of throw some people for a loop. So if you'd like to try some others, um, the lasso tools are more for real freeform selections. The polygonal lasso tool is great for ones that have hard edges to them. Uh, the magnetic lasso tool is one that tries to tries to capture the edge of an object, especially you know if it's well defined against a different color background. Uh, so if I just start clicking and dragging along the edge of this plate here, you'll notice how it just kind of follows right along the edge there. You do have to have kind of a steady hand for this one. But for objects with more complex edges that are well-defined, that can be a useful tool as well. Again, Command C, Command V. Ah, I must have added. I must have added what I had selected with the egg already, so because I got both of them in there. But that's okay. I mean, this this you have to be careful of because now these two are linked, and if I move one of them, I'm moving both of them because they're on that same layer. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and try that selection one more time. This time, I'm gonna show you the quick selection tool, which is often one of the easiest ones to use. Um, this one, okay, let me make sure I'm doing a new selection here. And I'll up the size on my selection tool there. And all you have to do with this one is kind of draw on the inside of an object and it will intuitively select whatever's inside that object. So it's, it's a great way to make quick selections that you can then clean up later. Uh, this one came out fairly well, so I'm going to do Command C and Command V, and that'll be enough, I think, to work with in this composite. All right. So moving on, once you have you know the images 
put together into a composite and arranged how you want them to. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make some changes to the food in each of these dishes. Um, one of the, one of the most interesting ways I've seen to do this, and this you know, this is a good practice because um, I'm going to I'm going to teach you how to do non-destructive edits uh, using adjustments layers. Uh, there there are two ways you can edit a layer in Photoshop. You can click on that layer and go to image adjustments and then choose what adjustment you want to make. And so here I'm gonna adjust the color of the soup in that bowl to make a sort of tomato bisque. Uh, that worked well because you know the white's not gonna be affected there. Um, however, you can also do things like this using your selection tools. I'm going to use again. Yeah, I think I will use the quick selection tool again. Oh, there we go. And let's see if I can get the inside of these eggs here. All right, if that doesn't work, let's go back to the elliptical bar tool because that'll work on the egg white as well. All right, and space bar. So here I wanna make sure I'm just affecting the egg yolk. And not only that, but the thing with using the image adjustments command is Unless you do a control Z, which is a great shortcut to know if you want to go back any number of steps. Um, it, if you don't use control Z, if you save this file and go back and decide you wanna make changes you know, or undo the changes that you've made, it's hard to do if you're using those destructive adjustments. Uh, the other way and really the better way to do this is to add what's called an adjustments layer. And I've got that piece selected there. What I'm going to do, you always have to make sure that you've got the layer selected that you want to work with too. And I'm not sure that I do right now. Yeah, because I actually want to be on layer three. That's the one that I want to affect. So now I've got that selection. I've got my layer selected. So layer three is where I have the egg. And I'm going to go down to this middle button on the bottom of my layers panel to create a new filler adjustment layer. And I'm going to do a solid color adjustment. And I'm gonna choose a green color for those Dr. Seuss fans out there. I'm gonna click okay. And over here, I've got this new filler adjustments layer. It's got, <coughs> It's got the color that I've chosen. That's the layer. Uh, it's being applied according to a mask that's been automatically generated according to the selection that, that, that I made. Uh, what a mask does is it chooses to hide or not hide that layer, uh, hide or reveal that layer. Uh, the black parts always represent the parts that are hidden. The white part represents what's revealed. So that's why I'm only getting this green spot on the selection that I made on that egg yolk. Now, here's the cool part is once you've got this adjustment layer on top of the egg yolk, you can go up to the blend modes, which are right here where it says normal. Uh, normal ordinarily just paste that layer on top. If I choose a different blend mode, for example, the color blend mode down here, then I get my nice green egg. You know, it's blended and blending together the green with what's behind the green, which is the egg underneath. So kind of similar technique. I'm going to use another selection tool. Or no, actually, I'm, I'm gonna go with that quick selection tool again. I like that for a lot of different purposes. And I'm gonna go to my croissants over here. Reduce the brush size on that. 
And again, I'm gonna select the interior there. And I'll do the same thing where I'm gonna go into create a new adjustments layer. So again, that's that icon down at the bottom. Uh, this time I'll do a vibrance layer. So this is going to affect how vibrant that croissant is. Uh, and I've got my vibrant settings up here. You can also play around with the saturation if you want, but if I just click and drag this vibrant setting up, you can see those croissants sort of brighten up a little bit. You know, they become more vibrant. Um, you know, whereas if I were to go the other direction with vibrance, you see how they can get kind of dull. So, you know, that gives you an idea of what vibrance does. Um, I'm gonna go right there about 34. So I've just shown you, you know, how you can make adjustments to the layers that you have in Photoshop using either the image adjustments tool, which again is a destructive edit that's harder to get rid of later, or by using adjustments layers that you can easily turn off. You know, if, if I decide I don't want my green eggs, then I can turn that off and get the original egg left underneath. Uh, you know, this is this is the way graphic designers will often you know create um, multiple instances of their work you know with variations to show clients, um, but I won't get too much into that side of it. Um, one more thing I want to show you here. Um, there's there's another tool that I like to show people called the spot healing brush, um, which is used to take off as it shows in the image here, you know, spots or things that don't belong or you feel that don't belong in your image. Um, if I click on my spot healing brush, again, you'll want to set the size for it. I'm going to set it about 20, yeah, a little bit bigger. Let's go 35. And what you can do with this is say, I wanted to take the olives or whatever those black things are out of this minestrone here. Then I just click on the olives. Oh, I've got to make sure I've got the right layer selected though. So let's go. And there's my minestrone in layer one. I'm going to click on the olives. And what this does is it, you know, interpolates everything that's in that circle there. And whatever it decides doesn't belong, you know, it's going to take that out and sort of cover over it with what's around it. Um, you know, this, this is a much better technique than, you know, just deleting part of an image using either the eraser tool or the delete key, which um, then you're going to end up with holes in your, your image layers. All right, let's see, about halfway through. So that's, that's our first introductory image compositing project. Again, you know, if, if you'd like to try this at home, you know, those files are available to you. I'll also send out links, you know, if anybody wasn't able to get them in the class today. Uh, next, I'm gonna take you to a little more advanced compositing, um, a little more advanced composite that I put together last night to again, again, talk about layers and some of the other things that we can do in Photoshop. So let me go ahead and go to file, open. And I want the desktop. Now this one, this one I took, you know, I think six or seven different images, again, all from Pixabay, uh, and kind of put them together into this fantastical reading room uh, to show you what it looks like. Uh, if anybody would, not, if anybody does want to follow along with this, let me, let me go ahead and stop sharing just for a second so that I can upload this file for anyone following along in Photoshop. I'll make sure I send it to everyone this time. All right, back to sharing my screen. All right. And I'll open up readingroom.psd. All right. So this one, again, you know, I've, I've already done most of the compositing part, you know, just again, showing you 
how the layers are put in here. I've got I've got multiple different layers in in here. Uh, the you've got the bookshelf there. I've got let's see, that's the chair. Uh, you can also rename the layers to make them easier to know what they are. So I'm going to rename this one chair and layer two. I'm going to call lamp. Okay, I've got my room layer, and I've also got some layers behind the room that I'll show you later. But, um, you know, a couple more things we can do building on what I talked about before. Uh, again, if I wanted to use the spot healing brush to sort of clean up. Okay, if I want to use it to clean up the ceiling, I've got to rasterize the room, which is actually a smart object which I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, the ceiling has a lot of spots and things on it, so I can use the spot healing brush to clean those up and make that look a little more uniform. Uh, I could also use it to take some of the knots out of the floorboards. And so again, you know, spot healing brush is a nice, easy tool to use. Um, <clears throat> one that's a little more complex that I would like to show you uh, is called the clone stamp tool. Uh, this is an interesting creative tool that allows you to basically redraw parts of your, your photo, your different photo elements in different locations. I'm gonna use this with the lamp. So I'll select my lamp over in the layers panel and the way the clone stamp tool works is, let me go ahead and enlarge this so we can see better. And I'll go ahead and zoom in on it too. All right, so say I wanted an extra branch for this lamp. I've got currently four different lights on my lamp. If I want to go ahead and create a new branch, what I can do is select my clone stamp tool, hold down the option key or alt key on a PC, that allows you to select where you want to start your redraw. So I just click once at the base of that lamp there. Yes. And you can see once yes, I start moving to a new location, it's going to start drawing right there. If I click and start dragging, it's going to magically paint in another branch for my lamp. and zoom back out. Oh, don't want to do too far. Okay. Uh, another thing, I mean, you know, this, this room is kind of no. quiet and dingy and a little dark. Um, so it'd be nice if the lamp actually provided us a bit of light. Uh, yeah. So what we can do for that is I'm gonna go to my room and I'm going to add a new adjustments layer to my room. I'm gonna add a brightness contrast layer. Okay, and that allows me to scale the brightness up or down. Now this is affecting the entire room. So I may not want the entire room. I may want to make it look more natural like the lamp is providing light to just one part. So the way I can do that is, again, I, I work with my mask here. So when I created this adjustments layer, it's already got a mask and it's revealing that mask everywhere. So the brightness effect takes, takes over the entire room. Uh, if I click on that mask, I get the mask properties in the properties panel. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this button to invert that mask. So it's going to hide all of the brightness that I just added to the room. And what you can do to reveal just select parts that you want is I go over and use the brush tool. Use about the sixth or seventh one down. And I wanna make sure that I'm using white when I start to paint with that brush tool. Right now it's set to black with white as a secondary. I'm gonna switch that. So now I'm using white as the primary. And let's see, I'm gonna increase the brush size. I'll leave the hardness at zero. 
that way. It's a nice kind of smooth feathered look to the, to the brush. Um, so now if I just start clicking on my lamp in those places, I can make it look like the lamp is actually giving off light. Now, if I want to expand that beyond just the lamp itself, then I might want to use a plunger brush. I'm going to go with about a thousand and I can increase the hardness just a little bit. So um, the three, effect. Nine, six, six, three, right. uh, and now, uh, if I just kind of select this yeah, yeah, left half of the room here, click once, and, then and I can look like it's brightening up that part of the room. So, again, just another way that you can work with adjustment slayers to make photographic manipulations. All right. So, I've made some adjustments to my room, the brightness of the room. Um, I'm also, oh, where did my photo show? Ah, there it is. Okay. I'm also going to make a slight change in the vibrance to this bookshelf over here. So let me use my rectangular marquee tool for that. And I'm just gonna select the lower reaches of that bookshelf. And again, I can add an adjustments layer in there. And in the vibrance, increase that a little bit just so the books look like something a bit more pleasing to the eye. Now, say, say I wanted to change the color of the walls in this room, because again, it's kind of that dingy green. Uh, what I could do is I'm gonna turn these top layers off here, and that vibrance layer actually affected what was underneath it, so I'm gonna turn that off as well. Um, and for this one, I'll show you how to use the polygonal lasso tool. So the polygonal lasso tool, again, is good for anything that's got real hard edges, like the walls in this room. Uh, let's see, let's zoom out more. Okay, so I'll start my selection way up at the top here. And with this one, this one, rather than clicking and dragging, you'll want to just click on different points. It's going to draw, draw straight lines for you to help you make that selection. There, up to this corner. And again, I'm just clicking once on each of these corners where I want to make the turn. And once I get back to the point I started, you'll notice the cursor has a little circle on it. That means I've come full circle with my selection. Once I click on that, that will complete the selection. Um, now, I don't want this part in the middle here. I don't want to affect the windows. So what I'm going to do is I will use my quick selection tool again, and I'm going to subtract that part. So again, just kind of drawing on the inside of the window there. All right, that's a fairly decent selection. So now I'm gonna go ahead and change the color on these walls. So again, I'll use my filler adjustments layer to a solid color. And let's see, what color do I wanna use for this? Let me do, let me go with a, this sort of white color here. So over here, uh, if you want a white in your color selections, you'll, you'll select any of the colors along this here, um, the color slider, and then just drag it all the way over to the top left. I'll click OK, then use my blend modes. And if I do a color blend, it actually gives me kind of a gray on that.
So let's see if I can fix that with a brightness or contrast. Uh, I'm going to select that again by going to the select menu and hitting reselect. That'll give me the same selection that I just made. I'll add another adjustments layer. This time we'll do a brightness or contrast. Turn the brightness up and that gives me more of a white look. And one more. This time I'm gonna use a levels adjustments layer and I'm just gonna take out some of the darks to again kind of whitewash and brighten up the walls. I'll put my lamp and my chair and bookshelf back in. Uh, room definitely looks a bit brighter and more welcoming now. Uh, say, I, say I wanted to add another window. Um, to do this, uh, I'm going to use my magic wand tool. I, don't believe we've used the magic wand tool. So to explain what it does, magic wand tool is used to make selections by color. Um, so it's going, to, if I click on the windowsill here, it's going to select that brown, brown color of the window, paint, uh, the, the window frame. And it looks like it got most of it. If I needed to get a little more, uh, this tolerance setting decides how many deviations in color it's going to accept. So if I turn that value up a little more and go back and make the selection one more time, that's much better. It looks like it got that little bit that it was missing before. So again, the higher the tolerance, the more colors it's going to select. If you select a too high tolerance, then you're gonna get everything in the image because it's gonna select all colors. If you put it too low, then any variation in colors, it's not going to pick up on. But anyway, uh, that's the magic wand tool. Again, another selection tool that you can use. Um, this one, I'm going to do another Command C and Command V. Let's see, did it create that extra layer for me? And it did. Why is it black though? Okay, something, something weird. Ah, I know what happened. All right, I'm gonna do a command Z on that one to go back. Uh, and I wanna make sure when I'm doing this that I'm not selecting one of my adjustments layers, but rather I've got my room selected because that's where my window pane was. Um, and again, I can either do a command C, command V, or I can also go up to layer, click on new, and then layer via copy. And that's gonna create a second window layer for me. And again, if I just use my move tool at the top of my tools panel there, what's going on here? Find the, that's the layer I want. And I'm just gonna move, what is it doing? Uh, it's because I've got too many layers on top. All right, let me turn those off. Okay, and this is the one I want. So let's work with our room here. Now, there's the layer that I was intending to make. I'm gonna shrink that just a little bit and move it up a bit. And I'll do one more layer via copy. Just do a command C, command V. I had to place it first. All right, so I'm gonna reselect, reselect my layer there. Now I'll create that new layer via copy. And why did you only get that little bit? All right.
All right. Okay, I didn't have quite all the selection here. So what I'm gonna do is I should be able to just duplicate that layer. Okay, that was a much easier way to achieve what I wanted there. I'm gonna clear my selection. And now I've got my other window that I can place over here. Uh, that little pinkish purple bar at the top, uh, that helps you to align the different elements that you have. Let's see, to align it. That's the one over there, there we go. So you can see all, all parts of my two layers are lined up there. And move this one over just a little bit. Now, I want these layers, uh, these windows to be able to see through the wall. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my magic wand tool. I'm gonna make sure I've got that layer selected and I'm just gonna select using the additive selection tool. I'm gonna select each of the window panes and then I wanna go down to my room cause it's actually the room has the wall in it that I wanna punch through. So I've got my selection, I've got room selected. If I hit the delete key, that punches a hole right through my wall. And I'll go ahead and do that same trick over on the other window. Again, selecting it in the layers panel. Let me clear my selection. I'm going to select each one of those. Whoops. And then selecting the room where I want to make the cut and hitting delete. And now we can see what's behind my wall there. If I turn the room off, you know, I've got this scene in the background. Let's turn the windows off too where I've got a couple of flying horses, a, a sort of fantastical moon scene, and then the moon itself. Um, and again, you know, you can make changes to any one of these layers too. Um, it might be fun to play around with the blend modes on the moon here. Uh, so what I could do, let's see. If I do a color dodge, that gets a, a nice looking, Fantastic moon there. A um, couple other tools you can use to make things blend together and maybe look more realistic. Um, the burn and dodge tools. Uh, the dodge tool is used to blur parts of an object, uh, whereas the burn tool sharpens parts of an object. So I'm gonna click on the dodge tool and I'll take my Pegasus over here. Increase the size on my brush. And looks like I've already done this, but I'll just kind of blur out his wings a little bit. And do that. Let's do that to the one over here on the left as well. And again, that just kind of helps him blend in a little better. All right. So putting my room back together here, adding in my windows, all the brightness and other changes that we did before. And of course that's Okay, yeah. It's important, you know, when you're doing these adjustments layers to make sure that you've got them masked in the right place. You know, I added my windows later, so now you can see that those adjustments layers, because the windows are below those adjustments layers, the adjustments layers are affecting that part of the image as well. Um, so again, you know, everything is organized according to the layers panel here. Uh, let me see. In any case, yeah, that should give you an idea of the different tools and ways that you can use Photoshop to put together a composite image and manipulate different objects within that image. Um, I'll hand it back over to Allison if anybody has any questions and we'll wrap it up.
Thanks. Um, does anybody have any questions? I I've only seen one come through in the chat, which was to resend the documents, which I did. So does anybody else have any questions? Yes. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'll send all, all the files by email too. That way you'll have access that way. All right. So thank you for joining us for the Delray Beach Public Library's Technology Training and Innovation Lab webinar series. Following today's presentation, you will receive an email with instructions for scheduling a one-on-one follow-up video conference with the presenter, as well as a short survey about your experience at today's webinar. Please continue to visit our website at delraylibrary.org to sign up for more online classes, check out our many digital resources, or consider making a donation to support programs like the one you just attended.